Wiggle Whiskey Balls. I'm Daniel. This is a, is a, this is a table slapping day. Slap the hell out of Remus! Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have never done with you a fully devoted to George Remus episode. We've used it as an A-B comparison. Uh, and ironically, Revis gave us the Remus bottle. Renita but, Revis. Yeah, yeah. But Revis. This one was a. Uh, I got your back, Renita. Yeah, there you Revis. go. Revis. Yeah, yeah, Revis. <laughs> um, Mark Hamilton, the magnificent bastard, contributed yeah. to today. Mark Hamilton, you magnificent bastard. Mark. This is MGP. MGP. Yeah. Right. But this is when we finally get to try like. We know that we use their 7521 mm -hmm. but they've got a couple of bourbon mash bills. Yeah, yeah. I'm not entirely sure that they're using only 7521. They could be using all their bourbon mash bills. Yeah. Right? So. But this is what they get to do when they take their own whiskey instead of sourcing it out to other people. I wonder if it smells mm -hmm. like MGP. Hey. Hey, it does. It's a little <laughs> more oaky than the normal ones we use. Uh, I'm not getting a lot of that chocolate citrus or chocolate orange note. It's a 47%. Yeah. 94 proof. Yeah. I get, it's uh, a little more dry. Yeah. A little cinnamon. Is that clove? A little clove? Yeah. Absolutely. This is a higher rye forward mash bill, mm -hmm. right? And so that's what that's, 20, that's what Mark Hamilton was asking. 21%? Do do? Well, again, we don't know. They could be mixing oh, their own barrels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Now, their single barrel releases of this one, I think, were the 75214. They might have kept it all that. Yeah. But I don't know that. And then, yeah, there's the oak in there. It's in the back. It's, it's consistent throughout this underpinning of that wood. It's nice. This dude's story is batshit crazy, ooh. man. Now there's a little vanilla prancing and scampering over the top there. You get that little vanilla? I think it's funny to choose George Remus as a hero because he was a big personality in bootlegger history, mm -hmm. but he also shot his ex-wife in a park yeah. outside of a courthouse yeah. and then pled insanity yeah. and got off. Yeah. That took the jury less than 20 minutes yeah. to say not guilty due to insanity. Yeah. He did get sent to a mental institution. Yeah. Seven months later, they were like, he's cured. <laughs> and they let him out again. Oh, Remus. Get all... Get what a scamp. Lord. What a scamp. <laughs> I mean, that's a whole new defense, you know? Bitch made me crazy. <laughs> uh, yeah, I like the nose, but we know this. We've, we've done MGP before. Yeah, yeah, but I like getting to see... What they would do with their own What they girls. choose. Yes. Yeah. And you know what I want to compare it to? Mm. Not another MGP. You, it, so the weirdest thing's happening right now. Mm. I'm nosing, I'm nosing, I'm nosing. This is a nice nose. But it's whenever I... Say a couple of sentences and then hit the nose. Yeah. I get this creamy vanilla note that I don't get if I'm just sitting there living with it planted in the nose. I haven't tried that yet. Yeah, like I'm talking, saying words with my face, blah, 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 and then hit it. Oh, yeah. Almost. Uh, now there's that vanilla. Almost um, um, like, uh, not rubbery, but like. Yeah. Manufactured vanilla. Yeah, it's like you, you have to exhale quite a bit and then on that inhale, then you can pick up this vanilla note. Yeah. I want to compare it to another high ray bourbon that's super classic. Okay. Old Granddad. Okay, yeah. Uh, it just drinks like oh, vanilla cream. Yeah, it's very... Almost no oak. Very, um, you know, it's got a lot of flavor. 47%, nicely balanced. Man, there's not much to... Yeah, there's not much to pick out there, which is kind of really good. It's so, really good and classic, and it's classic because it's freaking everywhere. Yeah. But this particular... It is different than the typical sourced stuff. Yeah, but you can still tell it's MGP. It's just a presentation of the MGPs that are familiar, that are really nicely balanced and well executed, yeah. Hamilton wanted a Rye Forward bourbon as his contribution, but we've done this one. But I thought it would be nice to compare two Rye Forwards, one mm -hmm. classic Indiana, yeah. or as we like to call it, the Kentucky of Indiana. Because <laughs> it's like right over the river. Um, in classic hmm. Kentucky bourbon. Right? Cinnamon and honey and oak on that nose. Wait, did I just... No. This is the new one. I can tell you. Oh, okay. I'm back. Yeah. That was weird. Cinnamon, honey, oak. Yeah. Nose. Yeah. So. Creamier. Yeah, it is. It is. Drier. More dry. More... 
Mm -hmm. Spiky is the wrong word, but it's crisp. How about that? It's like an image that was sharpened mm. on like a lens, mm -hmm. <laughs> on like a um, like your iPhone settings. Hmm. Just turned up the sharpening. Just made everything br kind of brittle looking. There's more green cut grass in the granddad though. Yeah, and this is gonna be lower proof than I typically like, 40%. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's 47. Yeah, uh, the 47 is bringing more of that intensity, that heft, that, that Yeah, flavor. if I have to pick between these two. It's Remus all yeah, day long. Yeah, it's closer on the nose. It is. The nose is quite a bit closer, but the proof carries the day on the Remus. So, MGP. It, you know, it was, a, it was like two or three years now, they said. We're no longer having sourcing going out. We're staying. Yeah, we are, but it's hard to get. Yeah, the only like, people we already have prior relationships and with. And then, you know, it was like, oh, crap, we can't get MGP. What are we going to do? And then you can still get MGP. Yeah, it turns yeah, out. You can get anywhere. Yeah. But then I've heard, once again, okay, no more MGP, and we're, we're not doing now. it, we're not doing it, it's not a thing, it's not a thing. So my question is, a lot of the people that have the MGP stock are mm -hmm. these middlemen yes. that buy MGP, fill up warehouses, sit on it for a minute, All and, then, of them. and then sell it yes. after it has a little bit more age on yes. it. Yes. But in five years, let's That's say. That's going to run out. Is that out and the MGP is really, truly not sourcing anymore? Or is it one of these things where... Are they saying this just to like I have, have no this idea. this FOMO, this fear of missing out on MGP, and people are gonna run and get it while they can? Or I is don't it legit? Think I so here's what I'm gonna because make up. Honestly, if I wanted to get a hundred, like if we wanted to get a hundred MGP barrels right now, we could. Yeah, yeah, but from a middleman. Well, well, also from a budget, like that we could not. Buy. No, yeah, and also <laughs> it cost like a thousand dollars more per barrel than it should have. Yeah, but just making. Up without any knowledge or any talking to anybody about this. I'm just curious about it because I, I think it's hard to read what actually is going MGP on. The new MGP model is doubling down on all of the big successful brands that were using their whiskey. Mm -hmm. They've been slowly buying them all up. So all ah, of the, so are they the next Pernod Diageo type situation? All of the like brands that are company? like yeah, but it's all theirs now. Right. And so what they're trying to what it looks like they're trying to do from the outside yeah. is become a Suntory yeah. Beam yeah, yeah. or a Brown Foreman right. or Buffalo Trace. Like, oh no, no, we are a big guy and we have these five famous brands. Mm -hmm. and we're not a sourcing distill. What are you what are you talking about? Right, right, right. We're not a sourcing distillery. Right. We're we're a big boy. I, so if that is in fact the case, mm -hmm. how interesting would it be in those conversations where you're talking with your supplier that has basically supp supplied you building up this very big brand? Yeah. And they're saying, hey, we're not going to supply our source yeah. anymore. Like, oh. I was like, oh, ow. Well, that's kind okay. of like whole business okay. model. That's uh, <laughs> yeah. It's like, Thanks. but you know, we will still supply you if we buy you. Yeah. It's like, oh, well. Uh, Okay, I guess. <laughs> yeah. but so look, you can either not exist <laughs> on the other hand, or get bought out. Dickel still sources. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. So just because they start to play with the big boys doesn't mean they're going to close the doors to sourcing forever. Sure. Right? Yeah. Because that's a good quick cash flow. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay. Yeah. I, uh, I like the Ramus. Uh, Angus MacPhail, 4135. When were you guys in Oban? Did you get on the ferry and go to Mole? We didn't. It was last year. We went on the ferry, went to Isla. Yeah. More specifically, Tober Mori. I know. I, we were, it was depressing to be that close. Yeah. I would have brought you both the malt of your choice and the yeah. Mishnish. I'd be gutted if I missed mole. out on yeah. that. No, you didn't miss out. Here's what happened at Oban. It was the first chance. Mm. It, was that, a, it was our last stop, too. Yeah. And it was the last stop and the first chance that Rex and I had had to be alone. Not together, but just it was just a nice spoon alone. <laughs> yeah, nice, yeah. nice spooning. We we all were like, let's meet up later around lunch, and I slept in, and then I left by myself, and I was walking the street. I look over, and there's Rex in a coffee shop by himself, and I was like, yeah, that's what we're doing. <laughs> we're, we're all going our separate ways. For a little. So we dude, that coffee shop had an amazing view. Yeah, it did. Yeah, there's a street, and then there's the ocean. Me and there's walking like by. All these beautiful ancient buildings, and oh, you walking me by. Me walking by. <laughs> Mm. Look at that wiggle. <laughs> Did you get that? <laughs> Two in a row. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uncle Mikey's World. Speaking on revisiting old reviews, what is the oldest bottle that is in the vault? Oh, dude, I just... Um, Not by the whiskey's age, but no. how long it sat on the vault's shelf or floor as the case may be. I poured the last of it yeah. Friday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jeff Sylvester from Canada. Mm -hmm. When this was my office and we were doing whiskey tastings, there was no whiskey marketing school. Nothing. Yeah. He showed up from Canada one year 
and brought Knob Creek, his okay. favorite. Yeah, yeah. And we put it behind the bar for us all to enjoy. Mm-hmm. And because I wrote his name on it and it had sentimental value, as everything grew, I just bought other bottles of Knob Creek yeah. to use for the vault. But that one always lived in a locked cabinet with Jeff's name on it. Mm-hmm. And we just finished it off on Friday. Mm. So that makes that bottle nine years in the vault. Yeah. And I've only been here on campus for 10 years. Yeah, yeah. So how much was left in the bottle? Oh, there was like... Was it still good? Uh, uh, no. <laughs> no. Too much air. Yeah. Right. It was like an ounce of whiskey. So it needed to be put out of its misery. Oh, yeah. yeah years yeah. ago. We, it was regretful. But, <laughs> but I just couldn't bear to do it without him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So, yeah. <laughs> so Remus, yes. Yes. Hey, yes. MGP makes good stuff. Who, who knew? knew? <laughs> All right, here's to fighting, stealing, and drinking. If you fight me, fight for a friend. If you steal, may you steal your lover's heart. And if you drink... May you drink with us. us.